Dear brothers, viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this gathering to be a gathering of immense benefit and blessing for us and a means of increasing in knowledge. Remember, the Jumu'ah bayan is, is, a, is a gathering of ilm. So we make an intention that Allah increases us in ilm. So we come with this intention to be inspired. So you open the doors of your heart and mind for ilm al beneficial knowledge. And so we go away inspired, inshallah, illumined by the teachings of Allah and His beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in terms of the, 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 the topic that's been uh, given to me today is in relation to climate change. So as you are all aware, this week is, 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 is raising awareness for climate change and the environmental issues which uh, are important in Islam. Uh, so I'd just like to really begin with by making a very bold statement. Uh, and because remember this is not just about climate change, it's about justice and climate change. And Islam, to, to, to my knowledge, is the only religion where the climate, the earth, the creation and the entire universe is intrinsically connected with justice. It's intrinsically connected with justice. And, and, and this is the privilege and indeed the very beauty of Islam. You see. And so you, you say, where do you get this from? And, and as you know, our sources of inspiration and knowledge is from the, the reservoir of revelation, yeah. the reservoir of light. And, and we all read Surah Rahman. Yeah. And we all, mashallah, love that Surah. And uh, in that Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the stars, <coughs> talks about the earth, the fruits, talks about the seen and the unseen, the heavens and the earth. And it's a really remark, truly, truly remarkable uh, surah in the Quran that really in, in a way encapsulates the universe. But the beginning of that surah in the first few verses is, is, an, is, is a really fundamental key stone aspect of that surah, which is what, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Mizan, that he has established Mizan. Mizan literally means uh, a balance. Okay. And the Mufassirin mentioned that the Mizan here is a reference to Adl. It's a reference to justice. Yeah? So environment and justice are intrinsically connected in Islam. They're inextricably linked together, you see. And in relation to other, the, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, some of you may be familiar with that, is Bil Adri Qamati Samawat Walat. Bil Adri. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the universe in a set measure. Everything in the universe has a pattern, has an order, right? Indeed, the very earth itself has an ecosystem. Yeah? And everything has a role, everything has a significance, everything is, is connected. And ultimately, for the, for the maintenance of life, you see. And you see, Allah is Rabbul Alameen. He is, he is the one who is the Rabb, the sustainer, you see. And as the sustainer, he's set this balance, his mizan, his uh, unfathomable, amazing order. You see, and, and, and when this order is disrupted, there's no life, you see. So part of the rububiyyah, the divine sustainership of the, of the universe, is that Allah creates, not only creates, but sustains with this adl, with this mizan. And what's really interesting is Allah addresses humanity, Allah tatghaw fil mizan. 
Yeah? That this mizan, so, 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 so the stars, the heavens, the earth, everything is part of that. Does Allah say to the sun, Allah ta fil mizan? Does Allah say to the rivers, La ta fil mizan? Wala tukhsirul mizan? This khitab, this address, is to humankind only. Yeah? Allah ta fil mizan. And that's an indication that what we do has an impact on the mizan. What we do, because we are, we, you know, hukum shari'i, yeah? There's, there's two types of hukum. There's hukum, uh, hukum kawni, yeah? Hukum from taqween. And in that, there's no choice. The sun will rise in a certain way and set in a certain way. The carbon cycle will occur in a certain way. The nitrogen cycle, the photosynthesis, everything is part of this uh, taqween, you know, this, 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 Magnificent creation of Allah. There's no, there's no choice. There's no irada in that. But then there's hukum shari, which is God prescribing a certain law where there is choice. You see, and so interestingly, in relation to this adal and mizan, there's a hukum shari, and the hukum shari is don't disrupt this. Right? And 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 so this is really, in in, in some ways, it's, it's led to this amazing curiosity. Is what an amazing thing that Allah sets the order, but then says to humanity, don't disrupt this order. So what does this mean, you see? So really, in many ways, the ulama of tafsir says, you know, uh, Imam Kushayri, for example, who's the great master, the spiritual Sufi master, but remember, he was also a great scholar and alim, which is what the Sufiya, who murshideen of the Sufiya, because the Sufiya, uh, there's two types, the, the murshideen, the people who guide, uh, enlighten, inspire, they're always ulama. But that's not to say that every single Sufi or every single person on the tariqah has to be a great mullah. Yeah? But Imam Kushiri nonetheless, he was also a mufassir. And he said, adla fi jami'il umur. You see, and here he gives us a little bit of a clue in terms of what Allah tatghaw fil mizan mean. He says here that ifizul adla, that establish this justice. Yeah? Establish this justice, equity. Right? In, in, fi jami'il umur. In every aspect, you see, of our life. We think Adal is just reading Salah and just going home, forgetting about what happens around you. And as long as you're okay, I'm honky dory, I couldn't care less with what's happening. No. Islamic teaching is you are a responsible creature. What is qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa? That's an amazing honor. It's an amazing privilege, I mean, from all the creations to be the Khalifa of God and that's every single human being from that ultimate sense of stewardship and responsibility, you see? And, and there's huge impact because when we do good, right, this good is transferred onto everything in the universe. One single act of good has a metaphysical effect throughout the universe. And likewise, one single act of evil has a metaphysical effect throughout the universe. This is why Allah says, وَلَا تُسِّدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِصْلَاحِهَا Do not corrupt the earth after its islah. And islah is some sulh, saluha shay. Something which is saluha is in its, in its good, wholesome state. The state in which God designed that particular entity, you see. And when we take it away from the whole wholesome state, Corruption happens and Allah commands La tufsidu fil ardi. Right? And, 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 and as the, the ulama of tafsir say, it's that this facade can happen in every single juncture of, of, of existence, you see. So I guess what we need to be aware of is that life is a big deal. Right? And the second thing we need to be aware of is that our life impacts on life everywhere. And we may, we may not see this, we may not appreciate this, but whether we know or wittingly or unwittingly, we have an impact on every single thing in this universe. You see, that's how important behavior is. You see, we don't take behavior lightly. I'm not saying we all become perfect creatures because that's not the design, right? But we become conscientious creatures, aware, <coughs> with a sense of responsibility. Allah presented this amana, we accepted it. At the subliminal level, at the subconscious level, we accepted this amana, you see. 
And so we have a duty of care and duty of regard. We have a, a duty of care and duty of regard. And remember what the Prophet ﷺ said in that famous hadith. He said, إِنَّ الدُّنْيَا حُلْوَةٌ حَضِرَةٌ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مُسْتَخْلِفُكُمْ فِيهَا فَيَنْظُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ You see, the world is, is sweet and green. Right? Some, some of the ulama say the meaning here is the world is fitna. Yeah? It looks good and it tastes good or in terms of the ladha and the, the, the nazara. Okay? But other ulama say is that this is the beauty in which God created the world, you see. Yeah? وَإِنَّ اللَّهُ مُسْتَخْلِفُكُمْ فِيهَا God has deputized you on this earth. Why? To, 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 to waste it? To corrupt it? To corrupt yourself? To corrupt this amazing master plan of humanity? This master species of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To corrupt that? No. فَيَنْزُرَ كَيْفَ تَعْمَلُونَ In order to really see how you do and function on this earth. You see? So the ultimate purport of this balance is that our life, the kind of life that we lead, is a precious item. It's an amazing gift, right? And unfortunately, we just get lost in the world and we become just pawns, you know, like little objects that are easily controlled by everything around us, by culture, by fashion by our lower self, by our nafs. And we just get lost in this matrix, you see? And Islam says, no, come out of this matrix. Come out of this entrapment, this seduction of the dunya. And live life with dignity and responsibility that's befitting your humanity. You are an amazing species. Every single one of you is an amazing creature, right? And, and so don't get lost in this mediocrity that the world wants to suck you into, you see. And ultimately, it's about living life with a spiritual center. And when you live life in this spiritual center, you live life according to the divine justice. And you become a means of so much goodness. And you become a, a means of so much restoration, you see. You take life with responsibility, right? And, and, and part of that responsibility is to look after the creatures of God is look after the, the, the creation of God. So the earth itself is a creature of God. Right? The earth itself is from the, you know, the, the trees. Yeah? These are creatures. Yeah? They are the ibad. Yeah? They are the ibad. Al-khalqu ayalullahi fa'ahabbu al-khalqi ila Allahi man ahsana ila ayalihi. The entire khalq is the ayal, the responsibility of the, of, 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 of the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most dear, the most dear from this, from this creation are the ones who are most kind and benevolent to the creatures of God, you see. So as Muslims, we are people who take with responsibility this duty of care that we look after the environment. We look after the creatures of God. We don't unnecessarily plunder and loot. And you know, the, the people who are wasteful and extravagant, they're the, they are the brothers of the devils. You see? And, and so the earth isn't here for us to rape it and to exploit it. The earth is here for us to look after our higher purpose, but also to look after the earth itself, you see. And this is part of khilafa fil ard, right? And part of not doing fasad is to look after it, is to maintain its salah, you see. And so when we move away from the spiritual center and make the dunya, you see, the dunya is different from the uh, from ard, right? The ard is the earth. The dunya is materialism, getting lost in the ard. When you make your ego the ultimate the ultimate effort, you see, when you make the dunya, the pursuit of wealth and the pursuit of, you know, uh, riches and the pursuit of fortune and the pursuit of fame, the ultimate center, then corruption happens, you see. Then corruption happens. And that's why, that's why when you go away from the center, you enter into the realm of hawa, the realm of ego, the realm of caprice. 
And the caprice has no sense of measure. Yeah? The caprice has no sense of, you know, kind of balance. Right? It consumes with, with a, you know, with, with no sense of responsibility. You see, there's no sense of consequence. There's no sense of, you know, if I do this, this will happen. You see, and the whole world gets corrupted. And we have a whole, we have so many human beings on this planet who are regulated, not by the spiritual center, not by the qist, not by the mizan, but their lower self, by the egos. And because of that, not only is there spiritual degeneration, there is physical and material gen uh, de degeneration. And you see, you know, and, 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 and corruption happens at every level in this world. The consequences spread out throughout the world, you see. You know, in Canada, dumps 200,000 tons of wheat because of overproduction, right? 200,000 tons of wheat is dumped, right? Because it's of, of overproduction. And there are people literally dying for wheat, right? In, in America, $29 billion a year are spent on treating obesity, right? You know, diseases which arise because of overeating, right? And yet there are people dying because they don't have enough food to live, right? And so, so ultimately, living life in the spiritual center means that you don't become selfish, me, 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 only concerned about your ego, about your bank balance, about your house. It's about waking up to that reality that I'm a creature of God and just like, you know, subhanAllah, they're, they're just like me, there are millions of other creatures. You're not the only one who lives on this planet. Your happiness isn't the only happiness in this universe. And we have to become responsible citizens on earth. This earth, al ardu lillahi wal biladu, biladu allahi. al ardu ardu lillahi wal biladu, biladu. And everything belongs to God. And so we become humble, we become ibad. We don't walk on earth with arrogance and pride and that only me, 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 me type of culture that, you know, how dare you not respect me because I am who, what? Yeah? Who, who am I? I'm just a servant. Walk on, walk on earth like an abd. Allah says you are abd, ibad. Yeah? Walk and live like slaves of God. We, we walk on earth as if we are Fir'auns, really. SubhanAllah, introspection. Right? Walk with humility. Right? Humbleness. The, the, the subject of, uh, of, of the, the, the slaves of God, Yamshuna, they walk on earth with humility. Yeah? With, it, with responsibility. Yeah? And, and yet we have people walking with arrogance and pride. And, and these are the people who corrupt not only themselves, they corrupt everything around them, you see. So, so really, the invitation here is that, subhanAllah, you have an amazing religion. You have an amazing faith that inspires you, that elevates you. What makes you the best of the best. Yeah, pay heed to that. Give it some respect and courtesy. And live life with, with humbleness, with a sense of care and love for everything around you, you see. We ask Allah Ta'ala forgiveness for our sins. Allah have mercy upon us, bless us, protect us. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala sayyidina wa maulana wa habibina wa maljana muhammadin wa ala alihi tayyibin al-tahirin wa sahabatihi al-akramin.